Today we're going to be making a bunch of unique d20s. Each one will be a bit different than the last, but before we just make some dice, it's been a while since I've shown off how I make my molds. Not a lot has changed, but I wanted to show how we go from a single blank master die into something like this. Now, this is going to involve two separate dirty pour techniques being done at the same time, but I also wanted to show every step in the process this time around, including how I make my molds, because I have a series of videos coming up where we're going to take a look at some other unique techniques, but more on that later. Normally when I make dice with my goblin mascot on it that are canica cast made for me, check them out by the way, I used the slab mold I made a while back. But since I'm just going to be working with one style dice, just the d20s, I'm just going to work with these cups. You can use Dixie cups if you want, but I like these plastic cups because they're a little smoother and so I just like working with them more. As long as you're able to have two openings on each side, you can really use almost anything, as long as you can get the silicone out. See, I want my d20 faced inside there and I'm going to stick that down with some tape on the other side. Tape is really easy to work with, there's other things that you can use, but man, sometimes just the cheap stuff works the best. I place my d20 on that tape so that I can put the cup over it. I like having the ones side of the d20 face down so that my logo is up towards the top, but you can really use whichever one you want. I just find this the easiest. I cut off the excess tape so that I can work with this a little bit more easily, and I hot glue it down to the bottom. You probably don't need to hot glue it down in all honesty. I just don't want any silicone to possibly leak out, and I'm a sucker for putting hot glue on my fingers. Mm, just love that feeling. <laughs> Anywho, one face is now on the bottom. That's the part that's going to be where the mold opens up. Up, and that's where we pour the resin in once we make the mold. We're going to be using Dragon FX Pro Silicone today. It only has a pot life of 12 minutes and a cure time of 40 minutes, but we're going to try it. My buddy Drew over at Dicey Encounters really recommends it, and that's what he makes all of his molds out of, and so... Hey, it can't be that bad, right? So let's give it a shot. I mix it up by volume. I do the old eyeball it technique. You guys should probably do something a little bit more accurate, but eyeballing it works for me. I've heard you can actually dye your silicone with mica powders, and so I'm gonna try that because any excuse to make anything gold, I will absolutely take. Though you all shouldn't use this type of mica powder. I've just had this from since I started making stuff and I wanted to use it so I can finally get rid of it. But use something like Mad Micas. It's a lot more ethically sourced. Or just don't dye it at all because you don't need to. I'm just a freak for gold. I pour it very very slowly over my d20 and its mold housing, that way the silicone has time to go over all of the numbers. I do have to work a bit quick here because of the working time, and while I'm trying to film that adds a lot of time, so forgive the camera angle that is not exactly straight here as I put it inside the pressure pot to help remove any of the bubbles in it. I leave it at 40 PSI for an hour and this is what it turns out to be. It is fully cured and good to go in an hour, so I was happy with that. The only thing that I did notice is this silicone, whenever it cures against tape, leaves a kind of film that is uncured on the top of it. I didn't love that, so I left it for another 24 hours just to sit there. Afterwards, that film was kind of gone once I wiped it away and we were good to go. It probably wouldn't have hurt anything, but still, I didn't like it. Now I'm going to cut some keys and registration marks into the bottom half of the mold. This is going to be mirrored and opposite on the top half of the mold so that it has something to lock into. Professionals do way better at this because they actually put something in there to make good looking registration marks or keys, but I just cut it out and it always works for me. Other people have fancy mold housings, but I just make a little dam with tape around the outside, use hot glue, get it on my finger again, cry a little bit, and now all I have to do is put some mold release on the top of the mold. I like to use Vaseline. Other people use mold release and it works works just fine for them, but I never seem to make it work for me when I'm using silicone on silicone. That stuff's really sticky. So I just take Vaseline, run it all over. I try and get it as close to the D20's face as I can without touching it before I pour my silicone. This will create a nice little layer that hopefully this top part of the silicone will not stick to the bottom part and I can release it easily. After it's cured, you can see, yeah, it's no problem. Release it just fine. I probably won't dye any molds like this in the future because any difference in mica powder amounts make it a different color so it doesn't look fantastic. Fantastic. But the mold's done and now I can take my master out and bada bing bada boom, it's time to start making some dice. I actually experimented with a couple of different dice styles before I settled on the black and white one. I tried to do this golden black dirty pour with fuchsia foil in it and it just didn't turn out as shiny as I wanted. But then I settled on the style that we're actually going to use but I used silver instead of just pure black and white and the silver detracted from the overall just black and white feel that I wanted the dice to have. I was going for a kind of a yin and yang thing. So I eventually settled on using bold titanium white paint as well as black alcohol ink, Stuart Simple Black, and then white mixative. It creates this cool double dirty pour that you'll see in a minute. I like to use Envirotex light resin and then I also like to spill it. Oh no, oh no, oh shit. Oh shit. Okay, um, hold on. 
After a bit of cleanup, I decided that I should do it right and not spill it, and I mixed both parts A and part B of the resin by volume, mix it up for about five minutes until it's really clear and there's no issue of it not curing properly, and then I separate it in half once more, because I said we're going to do two different dirty pours. One's going to be white and one's going to be black. I've got Stuart Semple black pigment, because I'm not an Kapoor and I'm legally allowed to use it, but you can use any sort of black pigment that you want, it really doesn't matter once you put it in resin. I've also got this titanium white, which many painters will know is one of the best whites, and so I decided, hey, let's try it in some resin and see how it turns out. It is very heavy and likes to sink to the bottom, so I gotta make sure that I mix this stuff up properly. Normally I put wax paper down when I pour my resin so it doesn't get my desk messy, but I forgot because I'm dumb to buy any, and so I'm gonna pour it over aluminum foil and ruin my camera shots. Now on the white, I'm gonna put the black alcohol ink, and on the black, I'm gonna put this white mixative stuff. Sorry for the weird, shaky camera. I don't know what was going on. Maybe a train was passing by. This mixative likes to immediately solidify on the top. I don't know why it does it, but it's the whole reason I wanted to do this double dirty pour technique. Normally, when you do a dirty pour, it looks like this. There's resin underneath and you put a color on top and it kind of slowly spreads. But that mixative kind of clumps up and makes an almost like snowy landscape looking thing. And so I'm pouring these both at the same time. The white one with the black alcohol on top will make this cool layered effect. And the black one with the white on top will have these cool white spots. And you'll see when it's done, it's going to look awesome. I take a lighter to pop any surface bubbles after I've let it sit there for maybe five minutes or so. And then I place Place the lid on the bottom. I put a little bit of resin on the lids, that way there's always excess resin. I saw somebody on Reddit say that if you're watching Rivenator's videos you use too much resin, and I think that's probably true. I leave it in for 24 hours at 40 psi, same as I did for the silicone, and then we've got some cured enough dice to take out of the molds. You could realistically leave it in there for 72 hours or so. You probably want to leave your dice alone for 72 hours or so, or three times the cure length before you do any sanding. It'll just make sure that you have a cleaner surface to sand on that is fully solidified and hardened. Now, we do have to sand the one's face, but this is what I was going for. This looks awesome. The whites have these cool shadowy streaks and layers in them, and then the blacks have the cool white, almost Rorschach test look to them. It's all very yin and yang, black with white, white with black, and then I'm gonna ink them red. I was going for a very Chinese theme, Chinese New Year, yin and yang. I thought it would be really, really awesome. This is the dye that I keep showing off because I think it's the perfect encapsulation of what I was trying to go for. A lot of white Rorschach-y specks, and then a lot of white with the kind of black shadowy streaks in them. I think it turned out great. I need to make 25 of them for a reason I'll explain towards the end of the video, and so I made a bunch more molds. Based on how many dye I actually needed, 25, I knew I would ruin some of them, so I ended up making 30 just in case, because some of them are gonna have some spots that I didn't see and just not look right. So I made 30 D20s. I actually originally started with these larger chunky D20s, but the thing that I'm going to be putting them in, I didn't check until I had started making them. It doesn't fit that size. So the big D20 molds that I made just don't work. So I've got a bunch of extra D20s that are oh, wasted so much time on. All in all though, I'm very happy. They all are completely unique and different from one another. And I like this color scheme a lot more than the one I originally had planned. But now it's time to sand them. I'm gonna use Zona paper and my polishing wheel to sand them. Normally I try and sand them by hand so that you all can see how it's done, but I got a lot of D20s to polish and I hate polishing D20s. They are the most difficult ones to do, and often I mess them up. That's why I made some extras. So I put my zone of paper on my polishing wheel that's got a glass plate on the top of it so it's super flat, but luckily I only need to polish the one's face and the faces surrounding it because those are the only ones that are damaged. Now it's time to ink them, and as I said, I was going for a kind of Chinese New Year red, which I got that color by mixing these, but I always forget that paint darkens when it dries, or at least this kind of paint does, and so I messed it up a little bit, and it's a little darker than I had planned. Not exactly fitting with the yin and yang theme, but I still think that the dice turned out out fantastic. And since I'm going to be inking my logo on the other end, what better green than goblin green to paint the goblin on? And then of course, the little bars of gold that he's taken a little snack on. I gotta ink those with my new favorite gold, the chromatic gold that I got from Green Stuff Worlds. It works just like all the other colors I use for inking. I just put it on the numbers place, or in this case, the gold bars, and then wipe the excess away with my finger. If there's any leftover on the die, you can always just dip a tissue or something like that in some alcohol, and it'll wipe away. And bada bing, bada boom, we've got 25 amazing looking D20s. All of them different from each other, and all of them looking absolutely snazzy, might I say, and the logo really pops on that D20s place. This is that one that I've shown off throughout the entire process. It's got a kind of look of that Japanese painting of the wave and the ocean, which does not at all fit with the Chinese theme I was going for, but I really love how this one turned out. Beauty is truly in the eye of the beholder, though, because this one also looks amazing. They all look amazing in their own way. This one has a lot of the kind of shadowy look to it, and this one looks like a mountain with how 
how many white Rorschach bits there are. But though they are all beautiful, they all sound amazing when rolled too. Now I was worried about the numbers not being all that legible when I saw that big group of them. However, when you roll one by itself, the numbers are super easy to see and easy to read. And in that group of 25, I did actually make one of them with silver instead of white, so it's kind of like the special holographic one that somebody might get. Somebody might get, you might be asking, why'd you make all these 25 D20s in the first place, Rabinator? And I'm here to tell you exactly why. Because I'm working with a bunch of other dice makers and dice craft creators on a big project that we're doing with Level Up Dice. Hedron Rockworks, Glowcraft, Navi's Oddities, Dicey Encounters, we're all making this big advent calendar with them that is going to be available for purchase for this Christmas. And you can check that link in the description down below. It's going to be awesome. They're all unique designs made just for the calendar, and it's a good way to support the artists. However, it is a luxury calendar. When I say that, I say that so that when you click on the link down below and you see the price of that, you don't go, holy beep, you know, beep sound. It is expensive, but that's largely because you're getting a ton of really cool quality dice and you have a chance of winning the Hedron Rockwork Gemstone D20, which is fantastic. You get one die randomly from one of these artists like myself or Hedron or Dicey Encounters or Navy's Oddities, and the box was made by Glowcraft. It's really awesome, and that leads me to my next point, I actually got to take a look at Hedron Rockworks Gemstone D20. Ooh, but we're going to be showing that off in the next series of videos because the reason I joined up to do this is because it allowed me to work with these amazing creators on a cool idea that I had where I'm going to show off how they make their dice on my channel here in ways that you might not normally get to see and show you how all of these amazing makers all have their own different processes. So we're going to see Hedron Rockworks behind the scene, how he does some of the sanding and ink, or kind of, I guess it's not inking, but sandblasting the numbers in. It's really cool. We also get to see Dicey Encounters, how he's done his, Navi's Oddities. It, it's going to be awesome. So subscribe to make sure that you don't miss those as those are going to be dropping slowly over the next few weeks. It's been really good to get back making some dice, and so I hope you've enjoyed that as well. Like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you disliked it. I want to hear that too. Either way, I hope that you have a fantastic day.